no man will ever outgrow the temptation of sexual immorality no man put. so satan will be up and doing creating scenarios and creating any and everything that will exploit that provision and for one who is ignorant and not equipped with scripture and with revelation eventually you will be a victim the, do you know the assignment of sexual immorality i will tell you the assignment of sexual immorality is not is not the sex that destroys you there is something it does to you spiritually when the devil wants to attack you there is a a, a threshold level of spiritual fire that if you possess it cannot allow for a demonic attack and so the way that it happens is to introduce this to your life and it begins to bring you down to a level spiritually where an attack upon your life any dimension becomes possible the way this spirit works is that once you are a young and unmarried person the devil the spirit of loss acts by amplifying to an unusual degree are we together this desire that god put and then the moment you get married he will now flip of the coin by taking away that desire so you find out that you can see two people who sometimes are in a hurry to get married because they think they don't they want to keep themselves and then they get married statistics will tell us counselors and even men of god will tell you that sometimes once it happens you find out that that desire seems to just evaporate and vanish it is all the structure of the spirit one of the things it may interest you to know is that there is a strong relationship between the spirit of immorality and the spirit of untimely death. Those who become are those who never settle. They know that there is always a better and greater version. Believers, in times of adversity, remember to anchor your faith in God's unwavering love and promises. Trust in his divine plan and find strength in his presence. May this message serve as a source of encouragement and reaffirm your unshakable relationship with him. Remain blessed as you listen. Scene number one, sexual immorality and related perversions sexual immorality please write and related perversions we'll talk about the related perversions now first thessalonians chapter 4 3 to 5 the first sin that needs to be purified from the body of christ give us amplified let's read amplified then we'll read acts 15 28 and 29 for this is the will of god that you should be consecrated separated and set apart for pure and holy living that you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice we're reading to five that each of you should know how to possess control or manage his own body in consecration purity separated from things profane and honor uh -huh. verse 5 the last verse not to be used in the passion of lust like the hidden who are ignorant of the true god and have no knowledge of his will give us acts chapter 15 please from verse 28 and 29 amplified still for it seemed good to the holy spirit and to us not to lay upon you any greater burden than this indispensable requirement uh-huh that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from tasting blood and from eating the meat of animals that have been strangled and from sexual impurity if you keep yourselves from these things it says ye do well hallelujah now please i want you to listen very carefully sexual immorality from time immemorial has been part of society and it extends to all the organizations and even the individuals i want you to pay attention to this sexual immorality is predicated on certain facts that you must know please pay attention the first thing you need to know is that the desire for intimacy i wrote here 
is not demonic most people have not studied this subject i have taken the time to study this issue of sexual immorality the desire for intimacy is not demonic now that is the problem with this issue of lust and immorality because other negative vices like lying and stealing any day any time lying is lying and it is bad any day any time please look up stealing is stealing and it is bad but when it comes to the issue of sexual immorality the intrinsic desire for intimacy was not put there by the devil it was put there by god so it's not a desire you can cast out of your life are we together it is only a desire that was created to be expressed within certain conditions it is the presence or absence of the conditions that make it right or wrong not the presence of the desire is someone learning now that what can be a dangerous thing right now the next moment within the right condition of marriage can become the greatest blessing or one of the greatest blessing are we together stealing is stealing lying is lying for instance but when it has to do with the issue of sexual immorality you have to understand that it was god that put the desire for intimacy in men hallelujah this is very important and if you do not understand this you are going to be fighting a battle that you do not even understand write this down the spirit of lust and immorality or the nature of lust and immorality is that it capitalizes it capitalizes on this blessing that god has put within men and perverts it to the destruction of the victims so it capitalizes on the presence of this desire that god has put in men and now perverts it for their destruction if you're with me say amen now sexual immorality does not care whether you are old does not care whether you are young does not care whether you are an apostle whether you are a prophet whether you are good or bad sexual immorality is not about being good or evil it's about exploiting not a weakness exploiting a provision that was put by god and if not guarded within the frame of what i will teach you you can be a nice person you can be an evil person and from a sexual standpoint you will be victims of the same thing are we learning now this is very very powerful it is a cancer that has destroyed society destroyed great destinies it is a cancer that has destroyed people from ministry to business to politics noble people have crashed down sometimes overnight because of this like i said the goal is to expose us to it not from a standpoint of condemnation but to give us enlightenment and to supply us with the tools that will keep us strong are we together let me tell you this no man will ever outgrow the temptation of sexual immorality no man will outgrow being tempted that that is that is the point the devil will come once and again for as long as you are alive because he knows that 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 nature is in every man that desire that god put so satan will be up and doing creating scenarios and creating any and everything that will exploit that provision and for one who is ignorant and not equipped with scripture and with revelation eventually you will be a victim is someone learning it is a spirit i i in in researching for this i came towards some statistics i don't even want to go and talk about right now very terrible statistics that are not very very friendly and not very funny but then i studied something in dealing with this subject do you know that speaking within the context of sexual immorality the way this spirit works 
is that once you are a young and unmarried person, the devil, the spirit of loss acts by amplifying to an unusual degree. Are we together? This desire that God put. Generally, everything God gives man, he gives you power and control over. Whatever seems to go beyond your control has been empowered by another spirit. Are we together now? So, the way the devil pushes once you are unmarried without a spouse, he will amplify to an unusual degree. And I, there may be biological explanations. I don't downplay, you know, research of medicine. We're not discussing medicine now. This is from a spiritual standpoint. I know there are things like hormonal imbalance and the rest. I don't want to go into those discussions. Are we together? But that generally speaking, he will amplify that desire beyond the control of an individual and if not protected by wisdom revelation and some of these keys i will show you you will find out that you will be a victim and then the moment you get married he will now flip flip the uh, the side of the coin by taking away that desire so you find out that you can see two people who sometimes are in a hurry to get married because they think they don't they want to keep themselves and then they get married statistics will tell us counselors and even men of god will tell you that sometimes once it happens you find out that that desire seems to just evaporate and vanish it is all the structure of this spirit is someone learning now very very important now Beyond just sexual immorality, there are other expressions of immorality. Pornography, masturbation, all kinds of perversions. Sexual immorality may be the major issue, but there are many others. You see, the thing about, the thing about sexual immorality is that it is it requires a number of conditions for that to happen number one it is atmosphere dependent number two you will need the mutual consent of the parties involved but for things like pornography and masturbation these things do not need this all these extra things so there are many people who for some reason have been able to survive sexual immorality but pornography masturbation and a lot of other bodily vices do you know the bible says a man that looks at a woman to lust after her in the mind of the spirit he has already committed immorality so there are others who may not physically act it out but as far as god is concerned they are victims because it is a state of perpetual emotional entertainment Just like sexual immorality, pornography, masturbation, and so on, it does not care whether you are a man of God. It does not care whether you are married. It does not care whether you are single. It does not care whether you are young. It does not care whether you are old. If left unchecked, it will attack and wreck your life. Is someone learning now? Scene number one sexual immorality and related perversions there are other expressions of immorality is still under the group of immorality drunkenness drugs every kind of harm that is inflicted in the body that is inconsistent with god's pattern are we together so there are some who will say well i'm not sexually immoral but then there are people who are victims of drugs victims of alcoholism victims of all kinds of vices that's why it's written here sexual immorality and related perversions i need not mention other extreme ones unfortunately but it is true in the world and i hope and pray not the church extensions of extreme cases like having affairs with little children and babies and animals and sodomy you know that our world today is full of all kinds of things the goal is not condemnation the goal is to be able to expose this and to bring us to a point where we become free and free indeed because i can tell you many people are not free are we together very quickly so that we'll deal with the other things i want to give you five steps five scriptural steps to be free from sexual immorality and every related perversion and i want you to please listen and learn 
for yourself and for anybody God may give you the privilege of helping. Are we together? Number one, for you to be free from lust and immorality, the first thing that must happen to you is that you must admit it. Psalms 51 and verse 17. Brokenness is a necessary requirement if you are going to experience the salvation of God on this wise. It says the sacrifices of God. I hope you know Psalms 51 was the psalm of David when prophet Nathan came to him and to tell him what had happened to him. He was broken, repented, crying with sackcloth and ashes. And this was part of his contemplations. He says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou will not despise. Admit it. You must come to that point where you admit it. Listen, let me tell you the truth. By the privilege of God's grace, I can tell you, I have cried with and prayed with many people. And do you know, there are many people you see who are victims of sexual immorality and on further examining, they have very sincere hearts. Some of them grew up from families where the first place they had that that was wrong was even in church because it was a common practice. There are cultures that promote it as part of the cultural activities. Is that true? So it is very difficult. That's why in dealing with people, you must never throw away the place of compassion and mercy. There are people who were left, they grew up on their own and by themselves. They became victims of sexual exposures even before teenage. Some were victims from those they grew up under that trusted them. Now, there's no point bringing sad memories. But the point is that for you to be free from lust and sexual immorality and any expression of it, you must get to a point of admittance that I need help. My life needs the mercy of God. Step number two, very quickly. If you're learning, say amen. amen. Step number two. You must set aside time for a retreat as soon as possible. Set aside time for a retreat. A retreat gives you the platform to pray, to study scripture, to fast, and to be broken and repentant before God your maker. Can I tell you this? I think it was, I can't remember the man of God now I was listening to years ago. And he said, any weakness unaddressed will eventually bring you down. It is not the weakness. It is leaving it and assuming there is no problem. Is someone learning now? You must set aside time for a retreat. A retreat is a time alone with God. Can I tell you, when you are dealing with something this cancerous, nothing should be too important. You can't say, I am too busy because this sustains the potential. I am going to tell you, the, do you know the assignment of sexual immorality? I will tell you. The assignment of sexual immorality is not, is not the sex that destroys you. There is something it does to you spiritually. When the devil wants to attack you, there is a, a, a threshold level of spiritual fire that if you possess, it cannot allow for a demonic attack. And so the way that it happens is to introduce this to your life and it begins to bring you down to a level spiritually where an attack upon your life any dimension becomes possible are we together one of the things it may interest you to know is that there is a strong relationship between the spirit of immorality and the spirit of untimely death there is a strong relationship so number one, admit it with humility and brokenness, crying to the God of your salvation. Number two, a retreat is your next port of call. A sincere time alone with God to cry out your heart before your maker. In prayer, in fasting, in genuine repentance. When Jonah went to Nineveh, 
and announced to them the imminent destruction that was coming upon them. The Bible says immediately the king of Nineveh declared a fast. Everyone fasted till the animals and all of them wore sackcloth and ashes and cried before God. The thing about God is the moment there is brokenness, his mercy is ready to come. Is someone learning? Let me recommend a scripture for you that you use for your retreat. Psalm 51. The whole of Psalm 51 is the psalm of mercy. This was the cry, the pouring out. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. And then he says in verse 2, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 3. It says, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Verse 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. It says, behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Look at the psalmist pouring his heart before God and saying, listen, this, uh, this was a tendency that has been fighting me for many years. He couldn't find expression because I was not yet king. Can I tell you? You need to cry for God's mercy because there are many people who are not victims of this. Not because the devil is not attacking you. The opportunity that gives you room to execute it has not yet come. And the spirit of loss can lie quietly for decades. Waiting for the day you are exalted. I can tell you what came upon David did not come upon him in the palace. It was there right from when he was in the bush. Who will come to you in the bush when there are lions and the rest? Are we together? So that this immediately should damage any sense of self-righteousness. Of believing, oh, I think I'm fine. Uh-uh. There are many people, if you are exposed to one-tenth their conditions, you will fall like a pack of cards. Koinonia, are we together? The purified bride. So number one, you must admit and acknowledge that you need help and the mercy of God. It does not matter whether it happened through your carelessness, giving into the flesh. It does not matter whether it's a product of an attack and a spirit. It does not matter whether it has come as a result of foundations and ancestry patterns. Look at our dear sister, the woman who shared this. You see that her legs were broken, same position, same time. The sister, the same thing happening. There are strong demonic patterns. Let me tell you the truth. Except you deal with this by revelation. You can be a man of God. You can be a leader. You can be a father. You can be a businessman. That spirit from its ancestry will haunt you. Until you use spiritual intelligence to deal with it. Number three. Help now. Number one, I said, admit and acknowledge it, your need for help. Number two, you must set out time for a personal retreat. A time of honest appraisal. Flog it out with destiny, with all sincerity between you and God. Number three, where it persists and is still beyond your control, you must seek help. You must seek help. You must be honest enough to seek help. You must seek help. Now, let me pause here for a minute and just comment very quickly. I'm dwelling on this issue of sexual immorality because I just want us to deal with it a little bit before we now discuss the rest. It's a very serious issue. Do you know, please look up, do you know that in seeking help, I submit to you that there are many people who desire to seek help. But the reason is, history has shown that especially we men of God, have not sustained the kind of intelligence and maturity to manage people's private and painful issues. Is that true? There are many people who have been wounded because they came and opened up to their prophet, their man of God, and said, listen, I think there is something I'm struggling with. Prayer partners, accountability partners, mentors, men of God, have in many regards disappointed the trust that people have had for them. That is the reason why you see today, people have resorted to flying abroad and going to go and meet therapists, at least who will deal with it professionally and don't even know you. Rather than coming to cry to say, man of God, I think there is a challenge in my life. 
Many of us will pray and say, oh, let's pray. Father, the devil cannot take over this person. And later on, before evening, you have told your wife as a spouse, you have told your husband, ah, this is our prayer group, my God. God is bringing a lot of deliverance. You see the problem now? And then the person will tell another person and say, don't tell anybody. I would deny, I don't know you when anything backfires. Let me tell you the truth. It takes more than being anointed to help people. You must be trained. We must incorporate this in our mentorship platforms as we build people. Anointing and revelation is not the only thing that qualifies for spiritual leadership. People must sustain psychological knowledge, the maturity and the know-how to manage sensitive things. Some of these people are in positions where managing and dealing with these issues can have severe effects on them, their organizations, their platforms. You're a man of God here listening or within this place. We must know that when people open their pain up to you, it is a trust you must protect. Are we learning? But I want to tell you this. Help is powerful. It is amazing how something that looks like a mountain can be deflated in the presence of genuine help. There are people who are carrying spirits. So counseling will not solve the problem. Counseling, you may walk around counseling and say, okay, this positive confession, you will speak that in Jesus' name, I'm okay. And that spirit will just wait at the door of the counseling. As soon as you are coming out, it, before then it has gathered seven others. That's what the Bible says. And it will land on you in a way that you cannot imagine. That's why whether it's sexual immorality or people who are on drugs, when you are talking to them, have you seen how quiet? They will just keep quiet. Will you smoke again? No. Will you drink? No, that's the last time. By evening, do you know how this spirit works? Even if they travel to a region where they don't know anybody, the spirit will coordinate a way they must know who sells what. It's a spirit. So number one, admit. Number two, a retreat. Set aside time to pray and fast and study scripture. And cry out your heart in genuine brokenness and repentance before God. Number three, if and when the need arises, seek help. Seek help from matured people, your pastor. Seek help from your spiritual father. Seek help from mentors. People who have demonstrated maturity to be able to handle those issues. Number four, very quickly. Key number four is what many people avoid and ignore. And it is the reason why their deliverance is not complete. Number four, create rules and boundaries in and around your life. Create rules and boundaries in and around your life. Proverbs 25 and verse 28, please. 25, 28, Proverbs. He that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Create rules. When you enter a relationship with your spouse intended to be, create rules. Agree and pray and say in the name of Jesus Christ, we'll keep this relationship pure up until marriage. Create rules. Don't allow your emotions to suggest from beginning. Settle it that by the grace of God, as God grants mercy, this is how it will be. If you're with me, say amen. amen. You must create rules and you must create boundaries in and around your life. It's not enough to repent before God. It's not enough to now be renewed in your decision. There are systems that you must create, especially for sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is highly atmosphere dependent. You cannot stand and sleep with somebody in front of a police station or in front of a law court. The atmosphere is not right. may be difficult to sleep with somebody when Don Moen is playing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please write, please write. Let's, let's get to work. There's a lot for us to do. Don't just laugh. I hope he's entering you. Tonight, there is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. Are we together? Pay attention, please. So, the final encouragement for you is connect to a larger family of believers. 
community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 amplified please give it to us hebrews 10 25 amplified not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as many believers as is the habit of some people but admonishing warning urging and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching it says not forsaking the assembling of believers when you connect to a larger body of believers it can help you preserve your kingdom values are we together yes very very powerful and important so let me run through the step finally that to be free from the spirit of lust sexual immorality masturbation pornography and all kinds of vices whatever it is the first thing is you must admit that there is need for help number two you must be able to set a time of retreat of brokenness repentance before god number three seek help number four you must create rules and boundaries in and around your life and then number five connect to a larger family of believers has god helped someone please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cry to the lord father i obtain mercy preserve me go ahead and pray preserve me preserve me if the message has hit you and perhaps your life has been that way do not be discouraged remember the one who god loves is the one he chastises lord i obtain grace someone is praying i obtain grace deliver me from sexual immorality deliver me from lust for you it may not be sexual immorality but how about lust ungodly thoughts that roam around your mind seeking for an opportunity to be executed you can live and walk in freedom please pray you are praying from the depth of your heart for some of you is drunkenness alcoholism some of you drugs and all kinds of vices the purified bride must be free from this don't say it does not matter the purified church must obtain grace from god please pray doesn't matter whether you are a pastor apostle prophet god can give you a new beginning provided your heart is open to cry you are following online you are watching from any nation i like you to pray this is not a message unto condemnation it is a sincere admittance that will lead to purity holiness and lift you to a higher level of spiritual exploits someone is praying lord show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy i cry unto you You may want to extend that prayer to someone you know and love lord show my spouse mercy probably lord show my husband my wife show my children mercy show my parents mercy show my pastor mercy show my 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 ceo mercy show this politician mercy it's not a time of condemnation the fall of one is the fall of all the rising of one is the rising of all we are a body that is interested in our corporate growth i like you to pray from the depth of your heart pray for everybody you know prayer groups churches ministries pastors leaders politicians heads of government no one no one is beyond being tempted with sexual immorality no one is beyond being tempted with other immoral perversions has nothing to do with being good or bad pray that those who are bound by any and all kinds of addictions let it be broken in the name of jesus you are praying for yourself and you are praying for them praying for the body of christ hallelujah